Let's bring it. Let's bring it. Our guy Tommy Curran. You see him at NBC Sports Boston. You hear him on Gresham Keith as well on Tuesdays. He's joining us right now on the Harbor One Hotline. Tommy, we were just talking about this quarterback situation. Looks like Mac Jones uh, is feeling much better, and he will be playing. Should he play? Do you want him to play Monday night? One million percent, he should play. Um, I would like him to play because I love when the best players for the teams play. I don't think that there's really a case that's been made. In terms of a drop-off by Mac Jones, to say there's a smoking gun reason that he needs relief, but I think he can look over his shoulder a little bit now and say, wow, there's actually a contender who, if I completely stumble and throw up on my shoes, could perhaps take over my job. But I think, honestly, if we're saying all things are equal, unless he does any of that, he should have the rest of the year. So the Patriots are able to unearth exactly what they have at that position, which I think is a capable to highly capable mid-tier to lower mid, lower, high tier starter. Hey, so Tom, so how much pressure do you think is is uh, Mac putting on himself to perform at a high level? I think that's a great question, and the reason I was late, Christian, is four <laughs> o'clock is four o'clock is when the access in the media room starts, and I had to do irrelevant questions with Kyle Duggar, and Kyle Duggar's answer to my "Would you rather take a long road trip with Hey Arnold, Dexter from Dexter's Lab, or SpongeBob?" He chose. SpongeBob. Okay. Yeah. There's significant <laughs> Thank you for the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> well, then back to the pressure. Well, you how, asked him. Yeah. Well, I mean, I said you ask him, but yeah. how much pressure is he putting on himself? And should he? Significant amount. But what I think is interesting is one thing we noticed about Mac Jones throughout his rookie year was the amount of resiliency he showed and the way he bounced back. So when he had a bad practice, he would inevitably come back the next day and outperform Cam Newton. When he had bad reps, for instance, the pick six that he threw against Dallas, the very first play of the very next drive was a 75-yard touchdown to Kendrick Bourne. So, and throughout, that's really been the byproduct of, not the byproduct, the buzzword that has followed him is resilience. So even if there is pressure there, I don't think he's one of those, you know, skittish, squirrely, panicky players. Tommy, we heard would. from... Oh, sorry. I thought you were done there. Keep going. No, Stacy was kicking me out of the area because I'm talking in the hallway and apparently I was way too loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom, we heard from uh, Burt Breer a little earlier in the week and he said this a couple times on a couple different platforms that Mac is a bit of a why guy or that he has been at least at the start of the season. Why are we changing the scheme? Why this? Why that? Have you heard that from your sources as well, that that was a, at least a, the starting point of a little bit of friction, perhaps, between him and his coaches? I've heard that it's that he is a why guy because he said it at the podium one day. He said, I want to know why. Why are we calling a play? And if a play isn't going to work, in my mind, why are we calling it? I want to ask that question. If it's just to get it on film and see how it looks, then that's okay. But he said it at the podium, which... To me, the why of it is important, but I think if you are a Josh Mc, excuse me, if uh, if you are a Matt Patricia or a Joe Judge, the why of it could come with an undertone, whether it be in reality or perception, of well, are you questioning or you just want to know. So, which one do you think it was? I think probably both. But what I think is important to remember about Mac Jones is they're absolutely has been a level of frustration that he has felt this year. He's expressed it in body language. He's expressed it at the podium. Um, And every time he's expressed it, he said, but I'm okay and I'll figure it out and I always have. It's okay to be frustrated because if you come off one season and you feel as if things are changing around you that are going to deprive you of the same level of success you had the year before, of course you're going to be frustrated. There's a difference between being frustrated and being whiny and being a malcontent. And I think that's an extreme charge to make by anybody trying to charge that he was a malcontent in any way. We listened to Devin McCourty a couple of weeks ago go on and on about what a great uh, teammate and leader he is. We've heard a litany of players say that. So we have opinions that are flying out there in the vacuum of content that needs to be filled at all times. And inevitably, somebody decides to overstate it to the point where he's a dink. And I, think <laughs> I don't know who you're frustrated. talking about. <laughs> uh, I just think he's frustrated. Yeah. All right, Tommy Curran, NBC Sports Boston. And Tommy, you're talking about the why. Is there a chance that Mac Jones might be sitting there saying, why does Bailey Zappi 
to run play action on 32% of his dropbacks, and I only did it on 10. Is there So the play calling itself, like, do they sort of take what they've been doing with Bailey's and continue to evolve and help Mac Jones? Is Patricia getting better at that? I hope so. I, I really do. And I, I can't – inevitably, for as much as I railed on Patricia, or at least the decision to – to to put Patricia in that position. As much as I questioned it, he's done an outstanding job, and I've said that really since the Pittsburgh game, relative to the expectations. And if he looks at what Mac produced in three games and the number of times he had Mac's protection and the number of times Zappi did and the number of times Mac got hit and the number of times Zappi did and the completion percentage of Zappi with play action and the completion percentage of Mac, he can't help but conclude it's probably better if we have this kid do a little bit less of the find the matchup downfield and throw it 35 yards and try and exploit it and a little bit more of the controlled passing game. I mean, what we're going to do this on early edition tonight. I find, I asked them, I said, can we just reel together all of Matt's long throws from the Baltimore game? Because people don't appreciate how friggin' good he was that day. And the three picks, one of which was a desperation one overshadow it. He made so many throws that Zappy couldn't. So, you know, since you showed up late, we only have time for one more question. So I'm going to hurry up and throw it out there quick. <laughs> so uh, back to back to Mac, because I feel like it's a no-win situation for him, Tom. And because how good does he really have to play for all those people who jumped off the Mac train and became, uh, you know, that, that became zappy fever people uh, to actually convince them that Mac was the right choice in the first place? How well does he have to play to convince them that he was always the right option? The Mac wagon, yeah, the Mac wagon. Uh, I think <laughs> the people. This reminds all of us, I would imagine, except for Mego, who's too young, um, of Brady Bledsoe. And there were Bledsoe people who were so dug in that anything that Brady did was going to be explained away. And there are, and the inverse was true. I think if you're already out on Mac Jones, you need your head examined, but you're going to be hard to bring back especially without a Bailey Zappi meltdown. So to me, there's probably nothing he can do to recapture people, but he has to cut down the turnovers to even be in the conversation. All right, Tom, we appreciate it. Enjoy tonight. I know you'll be all over NBC or over there every single night. So have a great night. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Tommy.